Good evening. So good to see all of you. God bless you. So glad that you are here. And uh, I agree with our pastor. It's so wonderful to have all of you come out and commit to prayer. And uh, that's what leadership is all about. Leadership is all about being the committed and the convinced. And uh, I watched so many people over the years just kind of fall off. And I knew that they were never committed and they were never convinced. So if you turn in your Bible to the book of Acts, chapter 2. Title of the message tonight is going to be War and Roar. War and Roar. Actually, the Holy Spirit has spoke that to me in a conversation with a wonderful friend. And I said, what did you say? And they thought I was talking to them. I wasn't talking to them at all, but I just wanted the Holy Spirit to speak that into my ear again. In the book of Acts, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, beginning with verse 1, it says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come. Didn't say when it half came, partially came, but when it fully came. That's important that we understand that, that it was a time for the fullness, not the measure of it, but the fullness of it to come. And they were with all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound. Suddenly there came a roar. A sound, a roar from heaven as a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there were appeared to them divided tongues of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with Holy Spirit and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them the roar, the utterance. And so it says that the Holy Spirit came as a roar. Some say it sounded like a train. I don't know. I wasn't there. But it said it came like a mighty rushing wind. And I want you to keep that in mind because a little later on I'm going to talk to you about how lions roar and how they stir up a whirlwind before its enemy. So the title of the message once again is war or roar. What God provided for us was never meant to be reduced to a confession, but a roar. Let's have that video. There was actually five lions in that video, and all it took was for one to begin to roar. Then the second began to roar. And then all of them were of one accord. The book of Proverbs 28, 28 verse 1 says, The wicked flee when no one pursues but the righteous as bold as a lion. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 31, verse 4, these words. Thus says the Lord, the Lord has spoken to me as a lion roars, and a young lion over his prey, when a multitude of shepherds is summoned against him, he will not be afraid of the voices nor being disturbed by the noise. I want you to hear that. 
Don't be disturbed by the noise you hear on your television. It's just noise. So the Lord of hosts will come down to fight on Mount Zion and for its hill. And 2 Samuel 22, 14 and 15, these words. The Lord thunder, he roars from heaven. And the Most High utters his voice. He sends out arrows and he scatters them. Lightning bolts and they vanished. In the book of Exodus, chapter 19, verse 16, these words. Then it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there was a thundering and a lightning and a thick cloud on the mountain. And the sound of a trumpet was very loud so that all the people who were in the camp trembled. And Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was completely in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace. And the whole mountain shook greatly. In fact, the whole nation was so afraid at the bottom of the mountain that they begged Moses to ask God to stop talking. Why? Because the earth was cracking up. The mountains were beginning to, avalanches was beginning to fall. Trees were beginning to fall. All because God was talking. All because he was talking. And so they begged Moses, please, ask God we would do anything he says, just tell him to stop talking. I cannot believe that any believer would allow fear of what they hear by what was created. to think that it is any match for God. One of the keys to spiritual warfare is strength by faith. Is strength by faith. So we're going to build ourselves up in this hour on our most holy faith by praying in the Holy Spirit. Jesus never intended that only a few special people would walk in great anointing. He never intended for people to, special people to walk in that kind of anointing, not according to Jesus. To change the spiritual climax over a region and a nation, he said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. He has anointed us all, and all are anointed according to our faith. Everyone has the ability to function in the unction according to their faith, according to their faith. Satan's challenged Jesus in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, so it will be with the church. Great challenges will come to the church. Satan will bring great challenges to the church. But like Jesus, the church will come out in power. Yeah. It will come out in power. For those of you that don't want to directly be involved, we will bring you out. It's okay. We won't leave you. And Luke's gospel, chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, and then verse 13 and 14, these words. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan. You know, I, let me pause for a minute. You know, we used to have baptism service where we would offer people to get filled with the Holy Ghost. You know, so if you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost, if you've never been baptized in power and fire, tonight is your night. 
I said, tonight is your night. I want to pause just for a moment. Gentlemen up there in the booth, put that slide back up one more time. Because if you want to be filled with, with that kind of power, don't you leave here tonight. His name is Lion. <laughs> then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted for 40 days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing, and afterwards, when he had ended, he was hungry. And now, when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an appointed time. I remember, I remember when my, my daughter, my oldest daughter, she was assaulted, and that's how we got our, my oldest granddaughter, Alexia. And I remember when Apostle Lion came to our home. And uh, I walked him out the door, and I, ended, I just flopped down in the driveway and just sat down. He turned around, looked at me, said, get up. He said, this would not be the first battle you will have to endure. You'll have many more. And he got in his car and drove away. <laughs> I thought, real compassion, Apostle. <laughs> real compassion. You see, but it was at that moment that I had to make a decision. Where I was, whether I was going to cave in under what the circumstance, what happened, then rise above it. Are you going to cave in to the circumstances that are around you? Or are you going to rise above it? Our God never had to be voted in. Now, when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until a more opportune time. And then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. And the news of him went out through all of the surrounding region. In Matthew 9, 29, these words. And then he touched their eyes, saying, let it be according to your faith. Like Moses who rearranged Egypt's heaven, he prophesied God's declaration into the earth and God performed his word with signs and wonders. Moses contended with the darkness, the dark spirit that was over Egypt and Leviathan in the Nile River. He contended with that spirit in Egypt until the demonic structure in the heaven were dismantled. He dealt with them until they were dismantled and displaced. That is what we're going to do in Kingdom Crushers. And we're going to continue until they are dismantled and displaced. The spirit of Babylon has been allowed to corrupt people's minds, places, and things that God have reserved for his own use. Paul the Apostle said that the God of this world has blinded the minds of those who do not believe. He blinded their minds from the truth. In 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, these words, whose mind the God of this age 
the God of this age, has blinded, who do not believe, least the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine on them. It is so funny that people have selective hearing. Last night as I was being bored by the results, I heard a president make this statement. It's quite interesting. He kind of breezed over it and went on to talk about something else. But he said it was so interesting to him that in one state, the count was a half a million, and he says five minutes later, it had jumped to two million. Interesting. When, when men's heaven is conquered, when man's heaven is conquered, their eyes will be open to the truth that will set them free. When man's heaven is conquered. We are going to release our faith tonight in the earth realm to unlock the spiritual realm. We will release our faith in the earth realm to unlock the spiritual realm. We're going to dispossess the enemy in the earth by binding the controlling demonic strongholds because you can never possess until you dispossess. So we're going to dispossess the enemy in the earth tonight by binding and controlling demonic strongholds that are, that are ruling man's heaven, attempting to control the outcome of the final election. Jesus said that Satan was a thief and he came to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what he came to do. Jesus said that was Satan's purpose and he never changed it. Jesus said he was a liar. In other words, he was, he was the master of deception. In other words, there was nobody and there is nobody who lied better than him. And I often say that the devil's greatest weapon is deception and the church's greatest need is discernment. So Jesus said Satan was a thief. So tonight, we must prohibit the alteration of the change in any laws concerning the election process. We must decree and declare that this time and season is in the hands of the Lord, and they shall not be altered or adjusted by anyone or anything. Jesus has anointed you. Jesus has anointed me and this generation to embrace his authority and release his power of the spoken word. Word to contend for the breakthrough that would allow God and God's people to take back the inhabitants, the inheritance that we have been invited to share with him. We're going to take it back. The scripture, the Holy Spirit said this. He says, see to it that no one takes your crown. He said, you see to it that no one takes your crown. He didn't say, I was going to see to it. He said, you see to it that no one takes your crown. A proper and a righteous governmental order is the template that changes lives. It is a necessity we cannot overlook. God will help us to overcome the social rhetoric and the effects of frustrated people. Social rhetoric and the effects of social, uh, 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 the effects of frustrated people. Grace and peace will be multiplied to us through the knowledge of him 
as we begin to move through this hurting nation, God promised to multiply grace and peace to the church through the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Through the knowledge. So I, I, I'm amazed at the uh, wonder or the, the bewilderment of some people's minds. Do they not read the scripture? You are in this present world, but you are not of this world. And you are to control the visible world from an invisible place. It's walking in the Spirit. I ask the Holy Spirit. I ask Holy Spirit to give us a prophetic anointing, a different prophetic anointing. And the prophetic anointing I asked Holy Spirit to give us was the anointing of the sons of Issachar. To manifest, to, to have that anointing to manifest through us and give us the divine ability to accurately discern the times and the seasons that we are in. Not just us, but the whole body of Christ. To show us the plans of the troublemakers, the scoffers, the mockers, those who will commit character assassination. There are people who have us on assignments to do nothing but that. It's a smear campaign to smear your name, to smear your character, to smear your faith, to destroy your life and your reputation. That is what they do. They professionally do that. I ask the Lord to expose Satan's representatives and give us a strategy to identify and to place under arrest all their plans, their plots, and their schemes. In history's darkest moments of the, some of the greatest challenges of the people of God, God will always raise up spiritual giants to meet those challenges. He would always raise up spiritual giants to meet those challenges. And I believe that many of you that are sitting here tonight God is raising you up in this generation for such a time as this to be part of this spiritual giant that God is raising up. He's raising them up to meet the satanic challenges that are facing the body of Christ. We are going to rise up and in faith displace the storms that has threatened our nation and refuse to give in to the sheer volume of darkness that surrounds us. We're going to refuse to give in to it. We're not giving in to you. We must take personal responsibility to strengthen every weak place in our lives and to break any assignment of fear. To break every assignment of fear. Some may need to repent. Some may need to repent and renounce before breaking off the spirit of fear and torment, not just fear and leave torment, but fear and torment because fear involves torment. So, here it is. If you've not really believed it, you said maybe so, hope so, or maybe I believe different. I don't know. I don't know what you believe. I don't know what you hope for. I don't even know if you believe the word of the Lord. I don't know that. You haven't told me. But I can tell you, if you had any other thing in your heart, you allowed any other philosophy, any other doctrine in your heart, Paul said, let it be a curse. And you need to repent of it. And then you need to renounce it. And then the Holy Spirit will give you the unction to break it. 
and to dismiss torment off of your life. My prayer has been, Father, release a roar in the earth that will confound and turn back those who will lay traps for our current president. Let their own destruction come upon them suddenly. Let them be caught in the same net that they set for our president. Let them fall in the very pit that they have set for him. Let the witches be burned by the fire of your roar. Rain down fire and brimstone upon their dwelling place. Rain it down upon their mockers. Strike down their plotting and their wicked counsel. Let them hang on their own gallows, just like Haman. Root them out of the land of the living and make them like a moving, turning wheel, turning in confusion. This is my prayer. You can pray what you like, but this is my prayer. Give your angels charge over President Trump and his family. I asked it in the name of Jesus Christ. In the book of Amos, chapter 3, 8, these words, A lion roars, who will not fear? The Lord has spoken, who cannot but prophesy? In Joel 3, 16, the Lord also will roar from Zion, Zion being God's people, the Lord will also roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. The heavens and the earth will shake, but the Lord will be a shelter for his people and the strength of the children of Israel. Proverbs 20 and 2, these words, the terror of a king is like the growling of a lion. Scripture says that we are kings and priests unto our God. You know, if you ever sat next to Apostle Lion, you always hear there was a low groaning out of his spirit. The terror of a king is like the growing of a lion. Whoever provokes him to anger forfeits his life. The dominion roar of the lion. The dominion roar of the lion can be heard up to five miles away. There are only four animals in the cat family that can roar. The lion, the tiger, the leopard, <laughs> I like this in a jaguar. <laughs> Out of these four cats from the panther family, the lion roars the most. He roars the longest, and he roars the loudest. His roar has such a force, it lifts the dust off the ground and creates a large, a large whirling circle of dirt in the face of its enemy, a whirlwind in the face of his enemy. In the shape of a whirlwind causing confusion to his enemy, the lion's roar has been known to cause the, the metal frames of a vehicle to vibrate, scales to blind eyes, of human flesh and the dead to rise and walk. In the book of Acts chapter 9, verse 3 and 4, then 6 and 7 and verse 17 and 18, these words. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell on the ground and he heard a voice say to him. One translation said it roared out of heaven. Another translation said it thundered out of heaven. 
And Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And so he trembled and astonished and said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And then the Lord said to him, arise and go to the city. And when you, you will be told what you must do. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, hearing a roar, hearing a thunder, but seeing no one. And Ananias, God talks to Ananias in verse 17. He says, Ananias, he went his way and he entered into a house. And laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you come has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with Holy Spirit. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales. What put those scales on, Anani on Paul's eyes was the roar. It was the roar from heaven, and once Paul heard that, he couldn't see anymore. They were like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. In John's gospel, chapter 11, verse 42 and 43, these words. And I know, he says, I know that you always hear me. This is Jesus talking to his father. But because of the people who are standing by, I say this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now when he had said these things, he roared with a loud voice. Can you imagine what it sounded like to Lazarus? Lazarus, get up! It shook him. Lazarus! Get up! It was the roar that put life back into him. He said, Father, I say this because of the people who stand here. And now, when he had said these things. He didn't say he casually said it. Didn't say he whispered it. No, he said he cried. We're talking about God himself. Opened his mouth and cried with a sound that stirred death to life. Lazarus! The cave shook. The ground beneath it shook. Angels stood attention. And death gave way to life. My God. Lazarus came forth. And he who was dead came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to all of you, loose him and let him go. This untamed lion king has a power in his roar that covers the length of 88 football fields when a lion roars, or 283 professional basketball courts. What makes a lion roar? Lions are territorial, just like bears. They maintain their prayer meter by patrolling their borders. This is a lesson in intercession. We should always police the spirit realm. So they patrol the borders of the land to keep intruders out. Watchmen. Keep intruders out. 
If the lion does not protect his domain, another lion will come and take it away. A lion's roar is to declare his dominion. Jesus is the root of David and the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is king of kings and he is Lord of lords. And you, are, you and I are from a kingly lineage. And Jesus said, in our DNA is war and a roar. It's in your DNA for war and a roar. Let the spirit of war rise up inside of each and every one of us and make us a mighty weapon in God's hands. God said in Jeremiah 51, 20, 21, and verse 24, you are my battle axe, a weapon of war, for with you I will break the nations in pieces. With you I will destroy kingdoms. With you, I will break the pieces of the horse and the rider. And with you, I will break in pieces the chariots and its rider. And I will repay Babylon and all of the inhabitants. I will repay them for the evil they have done in Zion in, in their sight, says the Lord. God says, I'm going to repay them for the evil that they have done to you. I'll close with this verse, Get that slide ready, please. Hebrews 12, 26. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, yet once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. Let's hear those lions roar as we go into King <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 